Ryan Nobles from CNN. Good morning, Ryan Nobles. Hey, Bill. Good morning. Obviously, me. obviously you know that the uh, the talk is all about Vegas. And now, uh, do you hear? I mean, is it how long before you were hearing up on Capitol Hill uh, the the talk of we need more laws, we need more gun control? How long did it take? Immediately, immediately. immediately. I mean, uh, Chris Murphy, the senator from Connecticut who represented Newtown, uh, he put out a statement where he said that it's time for members of Congress to get off their ass and do something. Yeah. You know, uh, Congressman Seth Moulton, a Democrat from uh, Massachusetts, said that he's not going to participate in moments of silence anymore because moments of silence are, are just a symbol and they're not doing anything to solve the problem. So, mm. I mean, I think Democrats are going to scream from the rooftops that it's time to do something, and Republicans are going to ignore them. And, you know, the president and the um, – I was actually at the White House uh, on – on Tuesday or Monday, I guess. And uh, the White House press secretary said that day that, you know, now's not the time to have this conversation. That's what happens every single time yeah, yeah. a mass shooting happens. Uh, we kind of push off the discussion for another day and then we kind of forget about it and then nothing really changes. And I, you know, I heard part of your conversation with the sheriff about uh, changing gun laws. And, and, you know, I, while, I agree that the Second Amendment is is an important part of American culture. I think the idea that somehow there isn't some sort of change that could take place to at least limit the access that people with who have a proclivity to do something like this is not possible, while at the same time still protecting people's Second Amendment rights, I think, yeah. has been lost somewhere. And I don't know if uh, these members of Congress have the kind of the guts to kind of take on that responsibility. Well, and it's funny because we got a little uh, a little sampling of that here in New York State as part of the Safe Act, where part of that focus and you you saw you you really saw a lot of uh, even Republicans saying, "Well, I uh, I agree, mental health is a problem. The problem is is when we started instituting that in, in New York State, uh, then all of a sudden all these lawsuits were popping up because who gets to decide who's mentally unfit yeah. and that. You know, it's like uh, uh, that becomes a real challenge in itself. And, and again, but you, I'm not you know, sure this problem. Congress is the Congress that's going to be able to or has any intention of tackling any of this. Well, and I also think that to a certain extent, this is an issue that has to be addressed at a federal level, because I'm sure Sheriff Mayfield deals with it all the time, that if you, you, know, if you have very tough gun laws in a state like New York or Massachusetts, but, you know, Virginia, where I live, Gun laws, laws are very lax, and it doesn't take very much to get to buy a stockpile of guns at a gun show in Virginia and drive them up 95 and end up in New York City yeah. and, you know, cause all kinds of trouble. So I do think the federal government has to do something about it. But, Bill, this is like so many of the issues that you and I talk about on a weekly basis where both camps uh, scatter back to their extreme positions and they automatically get lost in the shuffle. And yeah. we don't have a sensible conversation about coming up with solutions that the vast majority of Americans agree with. You know, yeah, you could yeah. be a strong supporter of the Second Amendment and still believe that background checks are a necessary step before purchasing, purchasing a firearm. I mean, 80% of Americans agree with that. Right. But if you, if you are a Republican and are a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, you would never go down that road because the far right wing of the party would oppose that completely. Right, and if you right, were on the left, yep. the left side of the issue and, and, and a Republican was willing to offer up some sort of background checks, both then with the caveat that there, you know, that there would not be a federal registry created as a result of it. You know, yeah. the far left would, would disagree with that. So, uh, you know, that, I think that for somebody that covers it every day is the most frustrating thing that yeah, they yeah. can't be can't compromised. All about. you got to do is just insert partial birth abortion, uh, insert that into the conversation and remove the guns. And you have the same argument, the same push back and forth and the same resistance. Right. Who's, yeah, we can find a list of 15 yeah. issues that, right. uh, yeah. you know, where, you know, they, we've gotten to this point in American politics where the extreme positions rule the day yeah. and compromise is a bad word. And as a result, nothing changes and mass shootings continue, you know, and, and yeah. you know, I, I agree with the sheriff, you know, mental illness is at the core of this. And that is certainly a problem. But we're the only country in the world where mass shootings of this level occur on such a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll see them from time to time in other places. And sure, yeah, people will get, you know, there'll be a mass murder that'll go around with a knife and kill a few people in other countries. But there's no other country in the world where we're repeatedly breaking the record for the yeah. most deaths uh, in modern history at the result of a firearm. 
Um, and so if we can't wake up and realize that, you know, we, we have to address this issue yeah, in yeah. some way, you know, this is just going to keep happening. And, and I guess at this point, Bill, there's a level of tolerance for it still. Right. I mean, Americans seem to think that this is a worthy trade-off uh, for their Second Amendment rights, which I guess they're entitled to that feeling. i got to tell I, you, uh, interestingly, uh, Monday morning when I woke up to, uh, to this Vegas story, I, I, I paid very little attention to it. Um, because I thought, oh, another shooting. Um, yeah. It wasn't for a little while until I started reading and and then turned on the TV and realized, wow, this one is different. And but but you know, are we okay if only four people were shot? Because we would have never given it the attention if that if that gunman shot up four people at a concert. The fact that yeah. you know it was a mass. Uh, it just we have a tolerance today that we never used to have. Well, I think that when Sandy Hook happened, and you know baby children in an in a elementary school were gunned down. And that literally led to not one piece of legislation relating to, to guns and firearms yeah, yeah. moving into Congress. Not one. Uh, so, you know, we, we change laws in this country based on very much smaller things happening um, all the time at, at every level of government. Uh, you know, think about how Things had, you know, changed in the wake of Katrina and, you know, how federal laws and access to FEMA funding changed after Katrina. That's why they were able to access funding so quickly in Florida yeah. and in Texas, uh, and the federal response was so different. Now, Puerto Rico is a different story. Obviously, they haven't handled that as well. But we, we usually respond and, and Pretty well. fix yeah. problems. Yeah. And, we, and for some reason, in this situation, and, and again, this is not about saying that the Second Amendment should be repealed. This is about finding sensible ways to deal with this issue. So as the sheriff said, responsible people who have firearms can have them and use them yeah, responsibly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just the volume of firearms that exist in this country right now, you have to at some point, you know, recognize the fact that that's at least playing a yeah. contributing role to all these deaths. I'm uh, Ryan, quick question, and I'm not challenging you. Uh, you were talking about Sandy Hook and this incident as well, and that in the wake of Sandy Hook, not one gun law was passed or new gun law or regulation restriction. Were except in any, New York. Were, were, except in yeah. New York. Uh, he, on the federal level. On the yeah. federal level, was there anything proposed that would have, A, stopped Sandy Hook or or stopped this today. It is, is there a, a, a way that we could have And by the way, just one other, one other uh, point that you can, you can, you can touch on. De Democrats have the re re reputation that they're the ones that are for, you know, passing. They also have districts where they have to go home and have primaries. Yeah. These Democrats, Democrats they yeah. don't want any part of it at the federal level. Uh, and yeah. we saw that after Sandy Hook. Am I, am I right? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, the answer to your question, Jeff, and, and this becomes one of the talking points by uh, the gun lobby, that what happens is to institute the type of laws that may have prevented a Sandy Hook or prevented something like that would require, you know, heavy restrictions on gun access, right? Heavy restrictions. And so what Democrats or uh, gun control uh, proponents will often propose are things that take you maybe one step in that direction to try and get us comfortable with the idea that some sort of regulation to gun access yep. might have prevented a crime like this. And, and so then what happens is when you take that baby step, the immediate response is, well, this wouldn't have solved this particular problem. Right. Well, right, it might not have solved Sandy Hook, which was this awful, brutal crime uh, that, you know, was the byproduct of years and years and years of, you know, fluid access to guns, and when you try and, and, and fix that at a, at a at just like a small level, you automatically right. go to the extreme. So, you know, I think that that's part, that gets right back to the problem that we have with this discussion, is that, okay, unless you can provide me a law that you can put down on the books right now that A, doesn't infringe on my Second Amendment rights, and B, completely solves this problem so it never happens again, I'm not yeah. Well, you can't, it doesn't work uh, right. that way. You got to work incrementally to solve this problem. Well, and that's the uh, you know again, this is the problem in Congress today, where it's all being done from the left, far left, into the far right. Nothing, nothing gets done. Uh, I want to ask you quickly: a new poll that just came out, uh, giving the president very low marks on his response to Puerto Rico. In particular, uh, a few of the comments that were made yesterday raised some eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you uh, what what are you hearing on Puerto Rico, and the way that the the way that the president has handled Puerto Rico? 
Well, this is another example of the president worrying way more about the perception that people have of him as opposed to just taking care of the problem and getting the job. It was like the size of the inauguration crowd. It's kind of what this was like. Exactly. That's a great way to describe it. And I was covering the president all weekend in New Jersey, and that's when this flap started with the mayor of San Juan. And to me it was really baffling to a certain extent, because if you go back and you actually listen to the things that the mayor of San Juan said, she never specifically criticized the president himself. You know, she talked about being frustrated with the process. She talked about she was upset that the... Uh, deputy director or the acting director of HHS, you know, claimed that the situation in Puerto Rico was a good story. Yeah. Um, but she never, at, you know, at one point she pleaded with President Trump, but she never was critical of him. And he's so sensitive sometimes to situations like this that he just loses his bearings and just went off on her for no apparent reason. Now, this is someone who is probably not of the same political ideology as the president, so he probably already had. Clearly, there's no, there was no surprise when we found out she's a, a Hillary supporter. I mean, right, and exactly. most of Puerto yeah, Rico and, as well. And, 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 you know, and we should take her criticism with a grain of salt as a result. But yeah. I think it's pretty, pretty difficult to take somebody who's literally wading through water up to her waist with a bullhorn in her hand trying to direct people to safety, who slept, slept on a cot for the last three, month, three weeks and doesn't have access to power, you can imagine that she's going to be a little bit frustrated that it's taking so much to get help to her people in need. And so I think sometimes the president just loses sight of the big picture here when he's got to, while he's in Puerto Rico, bring up the fact that the state, that the island is, uh, you know, has massive debt that they yeah, owe yeah. to American creditors. Like, why, why at this point are we talking about that? You know, right now there are people whose lives are in danger. Our yeah. Sanjay Gupta has been there the whole week, and he's talked about preventable deaths. These are people who have diabetes or heart failure who, you know, as long as they have medication and have their insulin, they're fine. But yeah. yet, because they can't even get access to that, they're in danger of losing their lives. Could you imagine that? There's probably people listening to you this morning who are diabetic. Right, right. Who, they can't you know, get, obviously right. have to keep track of that. Yeah. But that's, it's a, it's, you know, obviously they're going to be okay. Could you imagine being in a situation where you wouldn't have access to your medication? And so instead of worrying about those things, and that being the thing he spends his time tweeting and sending his public message about, he's instead starting a, a political squabble with a, a mayor. A mayor. And he, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, and I don't understand why he, because Houston and Florida were handled so very well, and then this has just been kind of a little rough. So uh, right. I, I know we're out of time, Ryan. I appreciate it. Uh, good man. We'll talk again. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a and great week. We'll talk to you next week. Ryan Nobles, uh, correspondent. Washington correspondent for CNN.